Welcome to another episode of HT Quick Take and we are focusing on Pakistan again for all the wrong reasons. A ragtag team of Islamist radicals took Pakistan hostage for more than two weeks over a law that was hastily abandoned but the people involved considered as blasphemous. They wanted heads to roll and the head of the law minister of the country indeed did roll. This is bringing in a lot of questions about the civil society in Pakistan, the political establishment in Pakistan, the army and the intelligence agencies. Reza, first, what is the civil society thinking about the stir that had actually paralyzed the Pakistani capital Islamabad as well as cities like Lahore and Karachi and then ended just a couple of days ago. If you take a look at uh, the things that people have been writing on Facebook or you know what they've been tweeting about the Pakistani people, uh, it seems there's a lot of uh, frustration, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of despair about what happened yesterday in uh, Pakistan. You know, the government virtually caved in, uh, signed this agreement with these uh, radicals who had paralyzed Islamabad for three weeks and just gave in to all their demands without you know uh, putting anything forth from their position and this entire deal was negotiated by the military so there's a lot of questions being raised about the Pakistani military and going a little bit ahead uh, you know beyond the civil society if you look at uh, the you know the Pakistani newspapers today the English newspapers the editorials in them were pretty eye opening you know, at least two of the editorials talked about how the government had capitulated. Others talked about the abject surrender of the government and giving in to these extremists. And virtually all the newspapers said that this was an event whose, uh, you know, ramifications, whose uh, fallout would be felt for years to come. Let's talk about the army and the intelligence agencies. The army was called for help, but army refused to help. And one of the uh, top officials of the inter-services intelligence had signed on the agreement that finally ended the Islamabad city. What do you make of this? Clearly it shows that the army has you know had some sort of a role in this whole affair. I mean it was asked by the government to help and it uh, didn't step in, it didn't refuse, it didn't comply. Uh, instead the army chief you know took the position that this should be resolved without violence and he had a meeting with the Prime Minister where this agreement was, you know, sort of discussed and then thrashed out. Uh, very strangely, as you mentioned, an ISI official in charge of counter-terrorism has signed this agreement uh, as a mediator. The agreement itself lauds the army chief. So clearly, you know, the army seemed to have, you know, kind of tied the government's hands behind its back and told it to go and negotiate with these extremists. Now, the uh, main uh thing looking forward is the elections that are probably going to happen in mid 2018. We have already seen that uh, the uh, organization of Hafez Zaid, uh, the mastermind of Mumbai attack, has actually formed a political party, Milli Muslim League, and that party has already contested and won some local elections. Now, do you think that the group Milli Muslim League, as well as the radical Islamist group, which was behind this um, uh, this uh, whole sit-in affair, they are and people like them are going to sort of gang together and uh, uh, seek legitimacy through electoral processes. So basically, we may have a situation where the jihadists and the anti-blasphemists and Islamists are uh, actually uh, gaining control in uh, the Pakistani parliament? Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that they would gain control of the parliament, but they are on the ascendance. They are definitely, their star is uh, shining bright. They are, you know, on the upswing. Uh, you know, um, the Hafiz Said's party, uh, Milli Muslim League, then you have the Tariq Labbaik, Pakistan or Tariq Labbaik, Allah Ya Rasul, which was behind, which this was behind these protests. Yeah. Uh, the, these are groups that, you know, clearly have somebody backing them and they are going to, you know, try and seek, as you said, seek legitimacy. But that also serves another purpose. This will help the Pakistani military turn around and tell the international uh, community, which is pressuring it to take action against extremists. And they'll turn around and tell the world community that, look, these guys have now become mainstreamed. So they are hoping to ease the pressure on them through measures such as this. 
Whether these groups are going to be huge players in the election next year, I don't think so. I mean, uh, they have won uh, votes in certain pockets. They are definitely going to be used by the establishment to cut down support for the mainstream parties, parties like the PMLN, the PPP. Uh, you know, these groups will be, uh, you know, they'll be foisted onto uh, onto the scene, and they'll be used to cut away support from the established political players. There were only around 2,000 protesters who held actually a couple of main highways in Islamabad blocking them for more than two weeks. There were more than 8,000 security forces who failed to control them. Radical groups like this are actually bringing in their influence even into the mainstream society in Pakistan. But when I say this, I may very well be speaking about India given the recent incidents. You know very well what I mean. Thanks for watching.